what's the real viability for uh, uh, you know, zero emissions electric vehicles? I think we've, we've looked in the past at electric vehicles without the understanding that we needed an infrastructure to make them viable. Electric vehicles are only viable when they become more affordable and more convenient than gasoline cars. And in order to make them more, more convenient and more affordable, you have to separate between the ownership of the car and the battery to make it cheaper than gasoline car. And you have to put the infrastructure in place, similar to what we've done with gasoline stations, to make those cars convenient. Uh, what's the timeline that you're looking at for del delivering uh, the type of uh, vehicles that we're talking about in, in developed countries? Our first projects are in Israel, in Denmark, and in Hawaii. Those are scheduled for mass deployment uh, in 2011. Tests are starting next year in, in smaller volumes. But in 2011, we're planning to go broad mass market. And then the, the next round here in the San Francisco Bay Area, in Australia, and in, uh, in Canada, are planned for a year later, 2012. Obviously, these can become faster depending on government intervention and government assistance, but that's the, the timeline is usually two years out uh, from the day of planning to, to the date of full deployment. How about in emerging economies? Well, it depends on the economy. And in, in, uh, one of the things that we, we found out is in places like India, for example, people don't fill up their entire gas tank because of financial issues. And so they usually come up and they put three, four gallons in the tank. For them, 100 miles on a single stop is the norm. It's not an exception. So you, you, depending on the location, you have different, uh, different cases in, uh, in each country. How about in third world countries? Well, it, I think it's, again, it depends on government policy. I'll give you an example. The Chinese government this, uh, this week announced that they're going to give a 6,000 euro, roughly $8,000 of incentive for every new buyer of electric cars. In effect, they've made electric cars so much more desirable and affordable that the, the transformation in China will probably happen faster than anywhere else in the world. Um, it, it depends on the policy in each location, but at the end of the day, this can happen within the next decade. How will the uh, current global uh, recession impact uh, your strategies and plans going forward? It's different uh, in, in different places, but if in the past we were relying mostly on uh, public capital, on equity in, in, the, uh, in raising in from the financial market. Today what you see is that there, there is a, uh, a large amount of money available through uh, public sources, through governments. They're actually coming in to incentivize growth in their economy, and this is the perfect project. It's the combination of an infrastructure project, which we want to do right now, which creates jobs in the economy today, which takes away oil imports and eliminates emissions and revives the car industry. There isn't a country in the world that doesn't want to get this, this combination going as quickly as possible. President Obama has included cutting oil in one of his uh, key strategies. And what are your thoughts on that in, in, as you uh, move forward? It's obviously that this administration uh, gets the need to end oil. I think what we haven't seen is the connection of the dots, in the sense that we talk about ending oil, and in the same breath we say, and we, we need to do it through the generation of renewable electricity. But to connect the dots means you need to put a recharge network that connects the parking lot to the grid, and that's the missing piece. We also need to understand the scale. We talked about a million plug-in cars on the road by 2015. That would cause a less than 0.3% change in the, in the U.S. demand on oil. We need not 1 million cars. We probably need more like 50 to 100 million cars on the road uh, by that date. And so that there's a very different scope of project that needs to get done, but we're very encouraged by the direction the administration is taking. What's the biggest challenge facing a better place right now? Well, I think that the, the, the need to actually scale at the same time around the whole world. We've been now asked by... Uh, four or five governments every week to come over and do this, uh, this kind of a project in, uh, in their country. And we need to decide whether we go to London through Beijing or go to Beijing via London. I mean, it's one of those, uh, one of those situations on a nascent, on a small company. Uh, it's the financial market and the need to raise uh, capital. Um, and it's the, the, the overall need of synchronizing uh, an effort that is on multiple fronts, on technology, on policy, on, uh, on marketing, on consumer expectation. Um, across uh, the entire world and working with car companies, et cetera, at the, at the time where it's, it's very hard for them to, to change direction. So coordination effort um, in, in scale is, uh, is, I would say, the challenge in this execution. And in your view, what has been your biggest success? If you look at historically, nobody had put a viable plan in which electric cars will become the mainstream um, product 
uh, of transportation in any market. Nobody has ever put a, a plan that scales in, in, uh, through the use of normal economic means. The fact that we were able to get a government, a car company, and the financing to put it in one country has changed drastically the perception in the market of inevitability of the solution. It's no longer talked in the car industry on whether electric cars ever will come or not. The question is, how fast will it come? And in the arguments we have, some car companies say it happens in the beginning of the decade in 2010, and some say it will happen closer to 2020. It's, it's now given that with this plan, the better place is put, the market will tip.